Hello and welcome. In this video I'll be taking a look at navigation in the RASBAM AV8B Harrier 2. Now before we can fly anywhere we need to know how to use the INS. So um, just going to give you a quick rundown of the INS mode selector and what each uh, section does. Um, so obviously the first one is off, self-explanatory. The next one is C. This selects the um, INS C align mode. It connects with the ship inertial navigation system or SINs to perform an INS alignment. It provides a C alignment display on the MPCD provided the parking brake is on. Then we have ground. This selects INS ground align mode. It performs a ground alignment and provides an alignment display on the MPCD provided the parking brake is on. After that we have nav. This selects INS navigation mode and provides navigation steering information. Then we have IFA, which stands for in-flight alignment, and this uh, will couple with the GPS for a more accurate um, steering information. After that we have gyro. This is an emergency mode on the ground or aboard a ship. It provides attitude and true heading. In-flight it only provides attitude. Then we have GB, this is not used. Last but not least we have test. This selects a test mode in which the INS can be commanded to initiate a built-in test. Now if you want to learn how to um, align the INS um, feel free to uh, look at any of my um, cold start videos uh, which the link is provided at the top of the screen now. So let's take a closer look at the EHSD. First we have the waypoint data. This shows bearing in degrees, distance in nautical miles, time to go to the waypoint in minutes and seconds. Next is the waypoint polar position relative to aircraft. This is only displayed if within range scale. In the middle here we have aircraft data. Uh, it shows ground track in degrees and ground speed in knots. In the bottom right we have selected course. Outside the bearing compass we have the Tacan bearing pointer. In the bottom left we have the EHSD map scale. Next we have the Tacan polar position relative to aircraft and this is only displayed if within range scale. Up in the left hand corner we have the Tacan data which shows bearing in degrees, distance in nautical miles and time to go to Tacan station in minutes and seconds. And finally, the waypoint bearing pointer. Okay, so we're going to be taking a look at uh, tactical air navigation or TACAN. Uh, the first thing we need to do is to make sure the TACAN is switched on. Uh, it is. And then next, we're going to need to tune into a, an appropriate channel. So I've got a carrier and I've got a KC 130 out, out over the Black Sea. Um, so I'm going to put in the uh, the channel for the tanker, which is six nine X-ray, which is already in. Press enter, and now you'll see that we have a attack and steering um, triangle there. So what I'm going to do is turn towards that now. the little um, marker there to let us know that we are heading in the right direction and we are 29.6 nautical miles away so what I'll do is I'll speed that up now Okay, so we're coming up on the Tarawa, and we have the Takan marker on the EHSD there. Pull 
Right, okay, so let's go and have a look for the uh, KC-130 now. So we're going to bring the TACAM back up and the code for the uh, the tanker that I've put in is for 70 Yankee. And if we enter that, 70 Enter, and you'll see that we get another steer point there. And we are 31 nautical miles away. see the Takan simple is just coming into view now and we've got him just there I was not expecting that. Okay, so I've caught up the KC-130, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make my way back uh, ashore. Let's get the knee board up. Let's head back to Katazi 44X. So, Takan, change that to X ray, 44, enter, and we have a new steer point just there, and we are currently 83 nautical miles away. So just a couple of notes on TACAN, as I've got nothing better to do at the moment. Um, so the TACAN system is limited to line of sight, and the range depends upon aircraft altitude. The maximum operating range is around 390 nautical miles when the selected TACAN station is a surface beacon, and 200 nautical miles when the selected station is an airborne beacon. There are a couple of other um, sub-modes for the TACAN. At the moment we're in Transmit Receive. You can go into Passive Mode and just receive TACAN signals. If we click that, you can see we're still receiving the TACAN information, but we are not getting um, DME. So if you're just in the receiving mode, you'll not receive um, distance measuring. So just bear that in mind. And then air to air, if you are looking to um, and meet up with another aircraft, then the air to air can also be used. Um, so put it back on transmit receive. We've got DME, we've got bearing, and we've got our little um, tech and triangle to follow. So before we switch on the all-weather landing system we need to find out some frequency information. We need to bring up the knee board with right shift lima and then click the next page and you can see we've got channel, frequencies, tack hands, runways and the base we're going to. We need channel 3 for Katazi. So we can close this. So if we come over to the all-weather landing system button, press it you can see we're on channel 1 and it's showing on the ADU as channel 1, 2. Uh, switch the system on, uh, press 3, enter, and now we are on Katazi. We've got TACAN information, distance and on the HUD and EHSD, and we also have the localizer information. Now we're going to make a slow turn into the direction of Katazi.
So we're in the right heading, and now I'm just going to let Katazi know I'm inbound, as we will need runway lights uh, for the landing. Kutasi, in field, one, one, inbound. Just going to try and get the localizer more central. And at 10 nautical miles, I will drop the gear flaps and switch the water tank to landing. Right, now showing uh, glide slope information on the HUD, which means we're now in, within the parameters of the guidance beams. I'm going to make a slow descent and turn back in towards Katazi now. Now the ideal approach would be to form a perfect cross on the HUD. Getting close to 10 nautical miles now. Uh, once we hit that I will drop the gear and flaps and switch on the water tank to landing. We'll do that now. Landing light on, gear down, flaps down and water tank on. The next step at 5 nautical miles I will rotate the nozzles to 60 degrees and start performing our slow approach. As you can see I'm slightly above the glide slope. Um, it isn't perfect, um, like I said, the, the, the ideal approach is a perfect cross. Um, it all depends on conditions and what you're flying really. Um, and in this case, uh, the Harrier sometimes likes to nose up when you get the gear down. Okay, at least now I know the runway lights will be on, so I'll be able to find it in the dark, which is always a good thing. So if you are doing a, a night approach, always remember to get in contact with the tower, otherwise you'll be landing blind. Okay, so we're at 5 nautical miles, rotate the nozzles to 60 degrees. But like I was saying previously um, about contacting the tower, it might sound like a silly thing to say. But trust me, when you've got a lot going on and you're concentrating, sometimes you can forget. Caution, caution.
remembering that we are coming at a airfield so we don't need nose wheel steering activated um, so anti-skid is on and as you may have noticed the runway lights are starting to appear through the fog um, so that's going to help on our guidance as well um, so as well as the uh, EHSD showing us the right direction to go in the HUD with the glide slope and localizer information and now we have visual on the runway And we're down throttle back. Tidy the aircraft up. You can bring the flaps up to cruise so that we can taxi, switch off the water tank, uh, and then find the next uh, turnoff point. Uh, so switch off the uh, all weather landing system as we don't need that now. Um, now, as of the 20th of May 2022, which is when this has been recorded. Um, there, has, there is an issue with the all-weather landing system with Kobaletti. If you choose channel 1, you get no steering or glide slope information whatsoever. Um, I'm not sure if that's a bug that's waiting to be fixed or what, uh, but I, I couldn't, I couldn't, no matter how many times I uh, made the approach to Kobaletti, just didn't get any guidance information, so just to give you a heads up on that. So that's uh, the all-weather landing system. Pretty simple once you get used to it. Um, so yeah, let's move on to the next part of the navigation. So before we jump into the sim proper, just wanted to show you the flight plan as I will be uh, making an addition and I will also be editing a waypoint. So as you can see, we leave Kobaletti, run up the coast, uh, come inland, uh, the uh, Target is just the uh, at the south west of Zugdidi, and then out to waypoint five, over to waypoint six, and then I want to add a waypoint at Sanaki Kolki. Now, waypoint five is a bit too far east, so we want to bring that westwards, and I want to bring it to where the um, two rivers meet there. So to do this, uh, we need two sets of coordinates. Um, so we'll be looking down here for the longitude, latitude, and we will also need the altitude. So what I'm going to do is just go west from waypoint 5 to where the two uh, rivers meet, leave the pointer there, and just write down the coordinates um, that are on that uh, pointer. So northern 
uh, and then easting 415445 and then the altitude is 126 and then I'm just going to hover over the top of Sanaki Kolki to add our other waypoint and write down the coordinates for there so northing 421428 and then easting 42 zero two four four and then the altitude 43 so um, now that we've got those coordinates we can now input those into the uh, the uh, INS in sim so let's jump into the cockpit right so we jumped into the cockpit now before we get started if you've seen any of my other videos you'll know that I hate the rolling map in the Harrier um, purely because it mixes in with all the symbology on the EHSD. Now we can change the colour of that to make life a little bit easier. Now if we come over to map M and down here if you don't know if you can make it out it says colour just click that and that seems okay. I'm going to scale in. Um, okay so yeah that it's not as bad as the green um, but still not brilliant. But I need the I need the map to show you my uh, waypoint editing and my waypoint addition. So um, let's add in uh, well let's edit waypoint five like I said before. So oh, oh, hold on a minute, click data that might help. All right. So we want, we're at waypoint five here, and I want to slew it over to where the two rivers meet there. So what we're going to do is go up here to position. And we're just going to enter it in. So in for northing. Four, two, two, one, five, five, and enter. And you see it moves. Now we can change this one. So easting. And um, we've got to remember that we need to put in a zero in front of these two digits, um, uh, as it obviously um, can have a three-digit number. So zero, four, one, five, four. Five, five, enter. Now you can see it shifts westward, and it's now at the point where the the two rivers meet. And now we just want to enter the elevation, which is 126 feet or 38 meters. Okay, so that is now added or ed edited. Now all we need to do is click on data, and now that was that saved in the mission computer. And when we fly it, it will go exactly where I've just positioned it to. Now we want to add another waypoint. So if we go to data and go to press 7 because we want uh, a seventh one, press enter. As you can see, a star has appeared there, meaning that we are adding a new waypoint. So now we're going to add the coordinates. So position, northing. Four, two, one, four, two, eight. Enter, and then we want to add the easting. Remembering adding a zero again. Four, two, zero, two, four, four. Enter. As you can see, it's put it over the airfield. It's not smack bang in the middle, but we can change that. Um, if you have TDC um, slew uh, added to your flight stick or anything, you can actually go and make small additions by doing that with your TDC slew. So now I've just basically moved the uh, waypoint marker over the airfield and just made the small adjustment with the TDC slew. And now when we press data on that, it will now um, it will now show uh, uh, save it into the mission computer. Sorry. Um, so if we go to if we come back to waypoint seven, and we need to add the elevation as I'd forgotten, but it's already in as forty three feet, um, so there was really no need to do that. 
So as you can see, addition is pretty simple. Just click data now, and now we now have a waypoint seven in the flight plan. And we can go on and add up to, I think it's 22 or 25 waypoints. So pretty versatile. Um, you can cover a lot of the map with it along with uh, just the coordinates or you can do it using the TDC slew. So I mean that that's not too difficult a task really just got to remember to uh, click data when you're done um, so that it saves to the mission computer. Now if we go fly that it will uh, well I'll show you. Right so I'm going to fly the uh, ed edited flight plan um, using which which is essentially the sequential uh, route following um, as you can see on the EHSD we have our waypoint markers here and as long as this uh, waypoint has a box around it it will show up on the HUD as well so we've got our bearing, our uh, time to and our distance and um, all the um, legends are on the uh, on the EHSD. So all that's left is to basically get up in the air. Uh, one last thing is the waypoint um, sequencer isn't automatic, it's all manual. So you have to be really on the ball and remember that when you get to the waypoint you need to click um, the arrow to get you know to change the waypoint to your next uh, bearing and uh, distance. Otherwise uh, you'll just be flying around in circles. Um, so just remembering that we will get the ball rolling. I will speed up in between the waypoints so that um, the video doesn't drag on. So let's get let's get up in the air. As you can see, the waypoint symbology has popped up on the screen. We also have the uh, bar in the uh, heading tape at the top there uh, for our uh, where to point our nose. I'm just going to stick on the controls. There we go. And as a general rule for myself, I usually switch my waypoint around about three nautical miles away uh, from the actual waypoint. So when this hits three, I will select the next waypoint and then start my turn. Now coming up onto the edited waypoint five. What I'll do is I'll turn onto waypoint six 
I'll show you that there's a waypoint 7 on the um, EHSD and then I'm going to show you TACAN so let's just get waypoint 6 up on the HUD first Okay, so we're going to turn on to six. Now, just to show you that you can use TACAN to steer to an airfield as well, we're going to press right shift and kilo go to the next page and we'll get our airport list we've got our respective runways tac and channels frequencies and the channels that are pre-programmed into the harrier already if you want to use all weather landing system so we're going to snacky Kolki. we want 31x so tac and make sure it's switched on 31 x is already inputted in Press enter and you see that we'll have a attack and symbol showing us where the airfield is which is handy when you haven't got the map up. And as you can see we're just under 3 nautical miles for waypoint 6 so we'll change to waypoint 7 and you'll see that the uh, waypoint marker is over the top of the TACAN. So we'll turn in. Now TACAN uh, steering information and distance has overtaken all the waypoint information. You'll see that there'll be no um, waypoint marker. Oh, there is one. Okay, I'll take that back. Um, but yeah, uh, so we've got TACAN information on the left and waypoint uh, information on the right. So I'm going to get myself ready to land. So that's basically a sequentially um, followed um, flight plan. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to back out and um, come back in and show you how to do a non-sequential route following. So in the previous flight we uh, did a sequential route following um, uh, going from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. Now we can um, set up a non-sequential route following um, and I'll show you how to do that. So if we were to click route here we've got sequential which we're in at the moment and R sequential which as far as I'm aware doesn't actually do anything. Now we want to add in a non-sequential which will be placed in here. Click data, click NSEC up here and then we want to do ingress program it's on waypoint already so we're going to put in waypoint 1 enter 2 enter 3 enter 4 enter then we're going to click here to in, uh, egress we're going to do 5 enter 6 enter 7 enter now I've just basically put in the whole flight plan there 
don't have to put that in you can skip bits out I mean if I was to um, switch over to ingress again go to program reset that and clear it um, click on program you see now ingress is clear um, so I'll, if I put in one enter three enter four enter okay and then if I was to go to egress good program reset that program it again and just go straight to waypoint six then seven so we're going to skip out waypoint two and waypoint five um, if we click data now it's saved in the computer and then if we click root you'll see the nsec pops up and you'll see that there are pink lines on the on the map uh, solid uh, pink is the ingress and pink dashed is the egress so what we're going to do is we're going to go in and fly that and uh, just to show you how that goes so let's um, reset the view let's roll Now I forgot to add that um, non-sequential route following will only show in nav and vstore HUD master modes so once you get into air to ground um, you won't see anything um, and another thing is we can actually designate a waypoint as a target and I'll show you how to do that once we get closer basically a non-sequential uh, route following is you can change things on the fly you can do it while in flight um, so if you get um, an update an Intel update saying that a certain area is too dangerous to fly in or there's um, enemy defenses in such an area you can just um, delete that from the um, route following so it's um, a handy tool to have So we're three nautical miles away from the uh, waypoint marker. Click for waypoint two, or in this case, straight to waypoint three. As you can see, it's skipped out waypoint two from the uh, um, the flight plan automatically. Okay, so we're getting close to our next waypoint and the next waypoint is our target area and you can actually designate that waypoint so if we click waypoint 4 and click the bottom button here with desk we've now designated that as the target area we now have a, a, a diamond on that so if we turn in on it we should get a diamond symbol up on the HUD So if you have a targeting pod or things of that nature, um, you can slave that to the target designation um, so that it saves you looking all over the place for enemy uh, targets. So there you go, we have the diamond over the, over the top of the target. And what I've actually got down there are two T90s, um, a, a Zoo 23 um, in placement and I've got uh, an early warning radar so I'll do a quick circle over the target area just to show you
Nope, I'm being shot at. There you go, that's the target area. And undesignate that. And now we're going to egress. And talking about being on the ball, that I've not been, so I didn't update the waypoint marker. Remember in the TACAN from previous flight, 31X. So there we go, we've got Sanaki Kolki at the end there. Waypoint 7.
there you go that's non-sequential route following um, so that's the basics of navigation in the RASBAM AV8B uh, if you got this far thank you for watching um, if I've got anything wrong please let me know in the comments I'll gladly correct it um, and that's it from me so as always take care and I'll catch you in the next one